Hello, Oscar. Can you hear me? Hello, hello. Hi. Just let me know you can hear me. That's all I care about at this moment. <laughs> me and audio have a have an interesting relationship on here. Can I get a thumbs up? Yes, Amara, that's the person I was mostly waiting for to tell me that you could hear me. How's everybody doing? Hope everyone's hanging in there. We're gonna have a fun evening. Hopefully you joined us last time. I'm waiting a little while for people to join. Oh, maybe I shouldn't be twirling while I do this. Uh, waiting for people to join, uh, get situated, and we're going to cook with Brooke. And this time, I'll repeat this when we get more people, but um, I'm actually doing the cooking alongside Chef Jessica today. So this could be quite interesting. So we'll give it a couple minutes and then I'll let you guys all know what we're doing in case this is the first time you've joined us for this. If so, welcome. How's everybody doing? Hello from Bend. I love Bend. Hi, Owen. I can say hi, Owen. Yes, all the hands. Yeah, hanging in there. Love you too. <laughs> Did I see your question? I don't know. I don't. I guess I didn't. Hello, Isaac. Mm hmm. Oh, Salem. We're getting you guys from all over the place. I love that. Some of our stops on our Rip City Rally. Colin dislikes online school. I'm sorry, Colin. We're just doing the best we can right now, you know? Parents are having to juggle a lot at this moment. Hello from the North Pole. Alex, I don't know if I believe you. Really? Your sister, oh, someone's sister once cheered for the Blazers. That's fun. Our dance team is amazing. Spokane, that's where I'm at. I'm at my mother's and her husband Scott's in Spokane, Washington. You're going to meet her shortly, by the way. She's thrilled. <laughs> She's not thrilled. All right, guys. We're getting closer. All right. It's 5.01. So if you didn't know, this is called Cook with Brooke, and it's definitely more aptly named this time around because, like I mentioned, I am going to attempt to do the cooking alongside Chef Jessica, who you're going to meet shortly. Um, if you didn't know, I am the courtside reporter for the Portland Trailblazers. I love it so very much. And as you guys are, you know, staying at home quite, quite a bit more than normal, um, you're probably looking for ways to, you know, make sure you're, you're keeping up with a healthy lifestyle. You're getting outside, working out, and I bet you're doing a lot more cooking for yourself and your families. So that is why the Blazers connected up with Moda Health, our partners, fantastic group of people. And we are putting this on. It's kind of like a you guys sit at home. If you had the ingredients like we put on social media before, I think it was about a week ago, then you can cook alongside us. Or if you just want to sit back and get some tips, that would be awesome too. So it's just a way to kind of connect with you guys. And as you look to, again, continue your healthy lifestyle throughout this time, we're going to cook with you. You're going to cook with us. We're all going to cook together. All right. So I have a very special guest. She is going to be arriving shortly if she hasn't already. This is the time where I go, okay, where are you? Okay, where is Chef Jess? Where are you at, girl? Let's see. There we go. Why won't you click? Let's see, let's view this. There she is. There she is, she's coming, she's on her way. Shortly. Chef Jess, where are you? Let's try this again. She's coming to us from the Moda Center um, Instagram account in case you wanted to watch that there. View, okay. Where'd she go? Do it again, Jess. Hmm. There she is. Add. Okay. 
this is gonna happen sooner or later there we go <laughs> Technology, man. I'm over it. Okay. Hey, what's going on? Love it. <laughs> Welcome, Chef Jess. It's so nice to see you again. It's good to be seen. It is, right? What have you been up to? Um, what have I been? Oh, I cleaned the pool today. It's very exciting. <laughs> it's very exciting. Now, Somebody exciting has to. Is the pool open for business? The pool's open for business. My the boys were in it today. Oh. Uh, I'm coming live from my house this time. Our friend Matt's daughters are not feeling super awesome oh. today, so you get my kitchen. Uh, hey, well, that's funny because I upgraded from my kitchen. I'm at my mom's house in Spokane. Yeah. She has an amazing kitchen. And I didn't want to look bad for this. So she is going to be <laughs> my photographer. Or, yeah, photog, if you will, a uh, camera person. As Excellent. I attempt to cook with you. Um, just so people know, maybe this is the first time they're joining us. They didn't get a chance to watch the last, which was our first virtual episode of Cook with yep. Brooke. So for those who didn't get a chance to see it, tell everybody what you do and some maybe some stops along the way to get to where you're at. Okay. Uh, so my name is Jessica Barnes. I am the executive chef at the Moda Center. Uh, I've been there for this, this just my last one, I guess, was I sixth, sixth season? It's always weird saying that. Um, <laughs> In November, I'll be there six years. I'll put it that way. Um, I've been in sports entertainment as a chef for about 12 years now. I started with the Cincinnati Reds, and then I went to the St. Louis Cardinals. I went, who won the World Series in 2011 when I was the chef. So I'm not saying it was my fault, but maybe that's what <laughs> to do with it. Uh, and then I was in Seattle with the Seahawks when they won the Super Bowl. Boom. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's not me. I don't know. Uh, and then, so now I've been with the uh, Blazers, like I said, for about six years. So uh, I've been cooking my whole life. I've got two culinary degrees from the Culinary Institute, one in uh, California, one in New York. I, I worked and lived a year abroad and worked for the Four Seasons in Ireland and uh, the UK. Yeah, I've been busy. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, cooking is my passion. It's what I do. Uh, my second favorite thing on this earth is my son. His name is Kevin. He's seven. He also does Instagram videos if you catch on my personal Instagram at Sheffy uh, Barnes. So check it out. Okay. I love it. I, I love all of that. The Four Seasons, I mean, we, that's a whole nother episode. I'd love to hear some stories about your time with Four Seasons. Um, but, so that is wonderful. And you and I have been friends for a long time since yeah. I started with the Blazers. And we used to do this um, together and with an audience. And now we're doing it differently, of course, because of the times that we're going through at this point. So virtual, I think, is just a great idea because people are at home and they want it just to check out some different things. So I think it's fantastic. And we're, it's really about healthy choices right now. And so without further ado, could you let us know what we will be putting together today? Absolutely. All right, so let's see if I can figure this camera thing out. Flip it around. There we go. Um, so last time that we did this virtually, we did um, the Golden Girl Salad, which is a plum tasty brought to you by Moda Health. Um, it's a partnership that Moda Health and the Trailblazers at the Moda Center have uh, come together on. It's a healthy salad stand, but it's also much more than a, a salad stand. So we do uh, tofu there. We do a chili flank steak, I believe, there, a curried chicken. We do a cedar plank salmon, which I'm going to show you today, also with that stand. Um, and it's really just to collaborate with Moda Health and give the fans to the Trailblazers much more healthy options than you find in a traditional concession stand. So. Last show we did the no we did the golden girl salad and today we're gonna do the purple rain salad because we've got some red cabbage in there we've got some radicchio um, and then we're gonna Pacific Northwest it and throw some hazelnuts in there too so yeah. all right well this is the time now where I flip it around and attempt to do this okay. I wish I could watch you I'm really bummed that I don't get to watch you that's my most regrettable part about this I know me too but everyone this is my mom Allison she's real pumped about this. <laughs> She's going to be my camera person. And I just really want to show you. I wanted to impress you. Look, I look like a real chef, right? All of her things in their own little bowls. I'm so proud. <laughs> That's all I wanted to hear. <laughs> so all my stuff, Chef Jess, I, I wasn't sure, if, you know, how much we it together and how much it already needed to be done. So everyone that is watching, please really, really watch Chef Jess. And I'm just going to be kind of here attempting to do what she's doing. But she is the professional. So I'll just be kind of following along in my own way. And you are the one that's going to be doing it correctly. That's all I'll say. So without further ado, just head into it. I'm ready. All right, cool. We lose Brooke for a while. Her mom is taping up her fingers. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> um, OK, so I've got all my ingredients kind of laid out. Um, we're going to start with the brown rice. Whenever I look at a recipe, I want to make sure, obviously, whatever is going to take the longest that's what we start with. So brown rice, 
uh, cooking it just on the stove like I'm going to do can take anywhere from 35 to 45 minutes. We may or may not get to the final product here in our uh, cooking demonstration, but I made some ahead of time just in case. So I'm just gonna start with the standard on the stove kind of hot, right? Turn all the way up to high. One cup of brown rice in here. Pretty straightforward. We got sticky stuff on the bottom. I did too. Oh, what? <laughs> did you measure your water with it too? Because I did. Um, so one cup of brown rice, super simple. Two cups of just regular old tap water. Uh, and I put that on high. I put, I put in some bouillon. Is that a good idea? You put in what? I put in bou chicken bouillon. Heck yeah, add some flavor to it. I'm a big fan. Awesome. I'll just do probably about a half a tablespoon of salt. And then we're gonna let that sit. We're gonna let it come up to a boil. We're gonna top it. We're gonna turn it down to really low. Probably about a two on my stove. And then we're gonna let that sit 35 to 45 minutes. So let me get a few things out of the way. I did this about two hours ago. And but like I mentioned, I did burn the bottom, but I had just enough that it is a cup, so we're good. <laughs> Awesome. Well, and, and honestly, when it comes to a little bit of burnt stuff, I'm kind of a fan, especially if it gets just right below burnt, you get that almost like a hazel nutty, really nutty flavor, which brown rice has already anyways. Mm -hmm. um, but it kind of enhances that kind of earthy flavor, which a lot of just regular white rice, white rice doesn't have. <laughs> Let's see. Great. So then we're going to start working on this hazelnut dressing. So I took just whole skin on hazelnuts. Uh, threw them on just your basic baking sheet, a little bit of olive oil, and salt, and that's absolutely it. Turn the oven on to about 375 degrees, pop those in there about 15 minutes. Obviously, that's going to vary greatly depending on the power of your oven. Sometimes it takes 10 minutes, sometimes it takes 20. Uh, I usually roast things at a, like this, about five-minute segments. So check it after about every five minutes. It smells delicious, by the way. Right? I'm just gonna really lightly chop these before I throw them into my blender. Okay, that's what I need right now. Okay. I love the fact that Brooke and I were texting for the last hour to figure out what we're doing. Am I chopping them lightly or am I getting them just full of I'm surprising them? My my goal when I'm chopping things like this is really to at least get once through every hazelnut. This is because I'm watching you on Instagram while I can't see so I can see you over here, but I'm talking to you here. It's crazy. Oh, that's smart. I should have done that. Next time I'll do that so I can see your face because I can't see you. That's really smart. I'll put you on my laptop over there. Okay. Okay. You're, you're, you're doing more than me. Okay. Try not to throw them on the floor, but if you do, it's okay. It already happened twice. <laughs> it already I stepped on one. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a Yorkie uh, named Boston, and he's fantastic to cook with because anything you drop, you know you don't have to worry about it. It's yeah. it's gone. Yeah. Okay. That's a good idea. <laughs> ah. You know what? I'm actually just gonna do it like this. All right. So we're gonna chop. That's about I don't know. That's probably about a half a cup of hazelnuts. The recipe that I sent out, the dress, the dressing is. It's proportionally, it's a good recipe. It's just way too much if you make it to the specifications that I sent out. So I would highly recommend a half, if not a quarter batch um, of what I sent out. <laughs> I got a little crazy. Well, when I first looked at the recipe, remember I texted you, I thought there was a half of a gallon of oil. I'm like, is that after? I'm really <laughs> that would be the recipe that I wrote. Um, so if you're real, so make it, and you're really enjoying it, that's a, like a gallon. So you can do that, and then use it on absolutely everything for the next week. Oh, they're all over the floor right now. They are all over the floor. They're all over the floor. <laughs> uh oh. All right. So we're gonna hazelnut it, right? And then we're gonna reserve the rest of these, um, and then lightly chop those as a garnish for the salad. So I'm gonna pop these over here. The rest of my salad greens. Okay. So now we've basically got our hazelnut chopped. So our brown rice. It's coming up to a boil, so I'm going to turn this down to, like okay. I said, about two on my stove. And then I'm going to put a lid on it. And I'm going to let it go for probably about 35 minutes. So I'm, gonna, I'm a big fan of timers. I don't do cooking in the kitchen without timers. Yeah. 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 Same. Same. Yes. Yeah. It's smart. Even though if you think you know what you're doing, it's smart. So I'm going to about, I don't know, two and a half, two tablespoons of shallots in here. Let's throw those in there. They were... Uh, just really roughly, almost minced chopped. 
And we've also got about a tablespoon of garlic here. I chuck that in there as well. So garlic. And like I said last time when we did this video, and I'll say it every time, everything really is, is, is like it. Don't ever think that a recipe is an absolute. Mm -hmm. Um, so adjust obviously the recipe to your taste, even when you're making it. Uh, all right, so then we're going to add, let's see, I've got some basil here. Basil. Yeah. Basil. My mom is pointing at everything, by the way. <laughs> is she like, the crickets over there. <laughs> Thanks, mom. We appreciate you. She's multitasking. So since we work with Moda Health and uh, we're making a healthy recipe here, one fun fact, one fun fact about brown rice is that it's really high in B6, which is really great for metabolizing proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. So eating brown rice will actually help you uh, metabolize food faster and better. So I, I really enjoy brown rice usually most of the time more than white rice. Not only has it a deeper, nuttier flavor, but it's really good for you. So. I like it better too. That's one of the, you know, like when you have, when you have that you can choose from like a white rice or a brown rice and it just, you happen to like the one that's healthier better. I feel like a lot of people would agree with that. They like brown better. I can, I, yeah, I agree with that as well. We've got basil in here. We're going to throw some mint. Something about that combination between basil and mint just always sounds like a good idea. It always kind of feels like a summery, fresh thing to do. I like summery and fresh. Right? Mm -hmm. all, there's also a really good combination for cocktails, so. <laughs> I was thinking that in my head. I'm glad you got to say it. I'll just say, I don't care. I can say it. I can say it. Uh, yeah, basil and mint. A little vodka, a little uh, soda water, maybe a splash of uh, strawberry puree. Oh, okay, girl. Right? We should do one of these where we're making cocktails. I think that would be. Well, that's what, remember we did, we had, we, when we did it, when we were together the last couple of years, we had, sometimes had a wine pairing with it. <gasps> we did more than one. We had, like, we, we did an appetizer, um, a dinner, and then we did a dessert, and then there was someone that was pairing them all. So yes, I like where your head's at, is what I'm saying. Yeah, I like that one. Okay, so the basil's in there, the mint's in there. About a tablespoon each. Uh, I might have got a little heavier, but I like uh, herb-heavy dressings. Uh, so that's all that. We'll get this water out of the way here. Did I miss anything? Um, so then we're gonna do some apple cider vinegar. Got that. So I'm going to throw probably about half of it in there. I love this dressing. I'll make all of it. So should I put it in a cup? I just chucked it in there. So my container is 16 fluid ounces, and I threw a little less than half in there. And then I'm probably going to end up adding a little bit more after I blend it to taste. So okay. I chucked about half of it. My question is this. My mom and I wanted this earlier. So I have this amount of oil putting it to put in. Is that accurate? I'm going to have to look around the camera. Hold on one second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me what the side of the container reads. Here. Can she see it? Thanks. It's uh, four cups, I think. Four cups of oil. Cups. Thank you, Mom. You're the best. Uh, four cups. I would say probably about half of that. Perfect. Yeah. Let's do that. So I'm putting a little less. I'm putting about half of the uh, apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Half a thing of apple cider vinegar. Yeah. So about four ounces of apple cider vinegar. That's fair. Yeah. And then I'm going to take my Dijon mustard. I'm going to do about a tablespoon of that in there. Having this stuff out and ready is, it's like you do this for a living, huh? It's, like <laughs> it's so close to that. It's not even funny. I mean, two seconds, I'm going to grab my Pyrex container again. Yeah, so about two cups of... Smells delightful. All right. So far, so good. Come on. I'm looking for All right, and I'm going to throw probably about a tablespoon of salt in here. Got it. Got it. All right. And then I'm going to get loud for a second. So I like, I got a mix uh, blender. These are my absolute favorite. They're a little pricey, but they're highly worth it. They last forever. I think I've had this one for about eight years, nine years, maybe. And we talked about this last time because I said, do you use that a lot? And you're like, this is like my favorite thing in the kitchen. I use it all the time. So it's a, it's a good investment. It's an absolute good investment. That's absolutely right. Okay, so we're going to go blend ahead and together. blend it together. Make lots of noise. What am I doing? Cool. 
she was. Oh my goodness gracious. I wish you could smell that. We talked about that last time too. I wish we yeah. had smell it. You guys could smell all this stuff. Ooh, Does that smell good? It smells amazing. At least now I have somebody to talk to that also <laughs> smells the same stuff I do. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm with you. I'm smelling it. Oh, okay. So you should get like a good bitter, right, from the mustard and the vinegar. So you have that little bite that almost makes you kind of salivate, as I'm doing it right now. Woo! Yeah. That nice bright mint and the bright basil kind of in the front of your mouth, especially when you breathe in. Ooh. You know it, right? And then the hazelnuts just kind of round it out, give it that nice, nice earthly flavor. And then the oil just brings it together and keeps it that way. So we're gonna dump. I think it's really good the way that it is. So I'm not even gonna touch it. Uh, obviously, at this stage, if you feel like it needs more mustard, if you feel like it needs more cider vinegar, or those two flavors are so powerful, you need to add some more oil. Obviously, do any of those things. I think I might need to add a little bit more oil to my. I like heavy on the acidity. I don't uh -huh. like that, but I think maybe it's more I can add a little bit more oil. Yeah, absolutely. Um, also, I asked if this is a pregame meal you think Dane would enjoy. Uh, pregame, absolutely. This is really high in protein. Uh, like I said, the brown rice is good for metabolism, so that'll kind of keep it from getting too heavy on your stomach and lasting there for too long. Um, your apple cider vinegar is going to give you a nice antioxidant and detox. Uh, obviously, people take shots of that every morning. I personally can't do it because I get really bad acid reflux, but uh, it's really healthy for you if you can do that. Um, I can't find them. Yeah. yeah, we've got a lot of potassium here, magnesium. Um, we got a little copper from the red cabbage. So, yeah, I think it's a great pregame meal. So, there. there. Um, so, by the way, I did take a shot. I, I'm an apple, apple cider vinegar fan. I can take a shot no matter what. I, lo I love, like I said, I love acidity. It doesn't bother me at all. In fact, I weirdly enjoy it. I wish I could. I really, really, really <laughs> wish I could. Okay. How do you feel about your dressing, Brooke? You feel good? I love it. I love it. Like I said, maybe a tip more oil. Someone was um, asking about this recipe and where to get it, and we put it on social, but we're, we're going to replay this. This is going to be um, saved to Instagram Live, so you can go back if you want to go get the ingredients, which are also, like I mentioned, on social, and if you want to do this on your own and follow along at a later time, this will be saved on Moda Health and, or Moda Center and on Blazers, so <laughs> FYI. You should watch us over and over and over again. <laughs> It's quite entertaining, I know. Just, I know. You're so, learning so much from me in the kitchen. <laughs> oh, come on. Um, okay, so next thing we're going to do, so we got our brown rice is still going. Um, yep. I'm going to check it for another 27 minutes, unless our video ends before then. Um, dressing's made. I'm going to set that off to the side. That uh, hazelnut vinaigrette works on absolutely everything, um, and it'll stay in the refrigerator in a plastic container with the lid, just like I put it in for like seven days in the refrigerator. So... Uh, yeah, so there's that. We're good and good. Our brown rice is working. So now we're going to work on our salmon. So, oh yeah, salmon. Salmon. All right, so do something. All right, so um, we're using Atlantic salmon skin on. So we got this just from, I think we had it delivered from Fred Meyer, Brooke, I believe. Um, yeah, Fred Meyer, our friends over at Freddy's. And let me just tell you, mine is huge. Mine too. Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> it's generous. Uh, and here, whatever flavorings that you put on top of it. So okay. obviously, it's pretty wet, pretty moist. Um, so when you let it air dry, whether it's in the refrigerator or out at room temperature for about 20 minutes, it'll help that salt to absorb into the flesh of the fish. Um, it'll also help that lemon juice to get in there, the dill, the fennel. It really just kind of gives you a great surface for all those flavors to push down and really get into the flesh and give you that awesome flavor all the way through, not just on top of the fish. I love salmon, by the way. I would eat it every day. Oh I my God, go. I'll eat it every day. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Me too. Um, all right, so I went ahead and pre-portioned those. Uh, again, skin on. I know it freaks people out, but don't freak out about it. Um, and, and the way that I like this recipe is you don't have to try to cut it off. So for those of us that are really not comfortable with fish in the kitchen, this is an awesome way to get that fish, uh, that 
that skin on flavor, which I think is way better um, than not have to get a little paranoid and not knowing how to take that skin off. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. So portion that. All right. So we've got our lemons. So we're going to use the zest and we're going to use the juice out of our lemons. Uh, these are gigantic lemons that are super, super juicy. I was really excited to get them. Mm -hmm. um, so when I zest citrus, I'm going to get the, what's called a microplane. Okay. I'm going to get real close. Uh, these are actually really neat. I think they started off as woodworking tools. And uh, so this would be like a planer to work with wood. Don't use these, but that's what you would originally use these for. And then obviously they got brought into the kitchen. So they're just a, a bunch of tiny little sharp blades. Mm -hmm. Can be a little dangerous. They do have these that have handles on them for those of us that are a little nervous cutting our fingers off. Um, and really, you're just going to really lightly kind of push whatever citrus Mm -hmm. so you can see that yeah yeah it's super simple it's super easy it doesn't give you too much of the pith right so the yeah. pith is all that white stuff that's under your colored part of your citrus whatever that may be I mean that white stuff is going to give you those really bitter flavors so I'll so just I did here but I'm just gonna I just want to be uh one with you so I'm gonna do a little bit more oh, do it, do it. another way to do this would really be just take a knife, slice it off, right? Yep. You can do that. You can, you, if, you're, if you're, the pith is really an issue, you can really just kind of slice that off and then slice it just like you would, I don't know, a, a, the basil or whatever, you know, just kind of roll yep. it up and then chop it one way, turn it and chop it the other. So you just get these beautiful little tiny pieces. I might have just um, grated part of the sticker <laughs> that is <Awesome>. awesome. <laughs> Sticker adds flavor. That's what I was <laughs> Isn't it true though that these are edible? I mean you don't want to eat them, but that uh I I don't I don't know. I don't They're I've never heard that, though, but that would be really smart if that was the case. I'm just gonna tell them. Oh, <laughs> well, I don't know if they are. I heard that once, just you know, because sometimes you're cutting apples, you don't think about it. So I think don't go out of your way to, but Actually, someone look that up for me, would you? Ooh, yeah, somebody tell us. I'm, I'm pretty sure if you eat one sticker, you're not going to perish from the earth. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I think we'll be okay. I've eaten worse things than a sticker, that's probably for sure. Um, okay, so I'm going to take that wonderful zest and just kind of evenly, as evenly as we can, um, lay that on top of the salmon. I wash my hands so fast. All right, cool. Doing the same. Okay. Right. And then we're going to take uh, our fennel. So this is what a fennel bulb looks like. Also, uh, you can find it sometimes it's called anise, A-N-I-S-E. Usually it's just called fennel. Um, and then really, I'm just going to cut all those beautiful fronds off. Set those over there. All right. So that's a funny story. Hmm? Uh, I see. I waited to do this one with you because I wanted to play the story. So I went to the store, because uh, we, like you said, we had most of these things sent to us, which was wonderful, thank you everybody. But a few things we had to go, and one of them was the fennel bulb. So I went and I couldn't find it, I couldn't find it, so I just bought fennel because I was like, oh, second best. And then the guy who was, um, uh, he wasn't my checker, but he was helping bag, he's like, oh, that's a, are you just making a salad with those? Because I also have basil nuts. I said, yes, I am, but I, you know, I just couldn't find a fennel bulb, but that's okay. He's like, Oh, well, I'm, I cook all the time, and I love to make salads with hazelnuts, and I love fennel. And did you know that if we do have it, it's called anise, and I'll take you to go get it, and that's how I found this. I would have never known. Oh, uh, thank goodness. I know. Thank you, checker guy. Ooh, that's, that's awesome. It smells like black licorice. It does. It does. And there's tons of different ways you can do this. Another really fun thing, or something that I enjoy to have is almost like a side dish with salmon, is you take fennel and basically braise that with onions in in orange juice and then use that as almost like a almost like a chutney i know i'm using the wrong word but over the top of the salmon when it's finished uh, i think that's absolutely fantastic so orange with the fennel that's a really great flavor combination that sounds good since i'm taking you through all of my mistakes in the kitchen i thought i should just let you know also that after i was telling you this story i put this over here and i literally just put it on this camp mom go ahead and move it over here i put it on the candle and it started on, on fire <laughs> you know, it's horrible That's story like getting on fire. We used to have, uh, so this cutting board my father made, um, and I used to have a much longer one that had handles on the side of it, and uh, we had it on top of the stove, I had it on top of the stove in my house, 
and my dog came by, my much bigger dog came by, and we had the, the knobs on the front of the stove, and she batted it and turned both of the burners on and burnt the, the cookie board to a crisp. Wow. Was horrible. <laughs> uh, <we're gonna> <laughs> Um, so before I get too far into the salmon, now that I'm realizing what I'm doing, um, so the cedar plank that we are using for this recipe, when we do this at the Moda Center, these things are about twice as wide and about twice as long, and we do whole sides of salmon one at a time on the cedar plank. So we do about 14 of those per trailblazer game. Just fun facts for you. Um, so, all right. So what you do is you take your cedar plank. So we got ours. Uh, I, I went and grabbed mine from the local Fred Myers because I couldn't get it delivered to me, but that's okay. They come just like this. There's two to a pack. They're about five bucks, and they're way, way, way worth it. Um, so cedar planks, they need to be soaked, though. So I just took my little half sheet tray. You can take a baking sheet, like a cookie sheet tray, filled it up with water. I just threw, like, a bowl on top of it to soak it, keep it underneath. Um, it's been soaking for about two hours. They say recommend at least an hour, up to three um, but really the goal is just to make sure that it doesn't catch on fire uh, and burn your house down. So we took our cedar plank and actually I'm going to go ahead and do this before I continue with the fennel just so everything doesn't fall off when I move it. So I'm really just going to lay that right there on top of the cedar. Mm -hmm. Plus it looks really cool if you're trying to impress somebody. Absolutely. Right? No. <laughs> It was funny when you texted me earlier, you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you um, the planks. I was like, yep, my mom came through with that one too. Oh, mom, she's the best. <laughs> <It's never known. laughs> okay, so now that that was a silly thing, the mistake. So uh, so now the cedar plank, so I really recommend putting the salmon on the cedar plank first. That way, as you're piling all this good stuff on there, it doesn't fall off. So um, I did that a little out of order, but I think everyone will forgive me, I hope. I think we're all in this together. Right? Hey, who are you telling? Yeah. Good. All right. So we've got the fennel. We've got our lemon. And then I'm going to take a little bit of dill and just chuck that right on top as well. Yeah. We are big, big dill eaters in this house. My sister has a whole pot growing outside. I love it too. That kind of goes along with me liking um, apple cider vinegar. You see a trend here? Yeah. A theme, if you will. He likes the good stuff. I like that. Okay. Now I didn't miss. I didn't miss you putting olive oil on the fish. Did did I? Nope. I haven't touched it. Um, you definitely sh probably should put some down on the cedar plank before you put the salmon on there, so it doesn't stick. My mom did that. <laughs> See, me and your mom gotta figure this out. It's fantastic. Yeah. All right. I like a lot of dill, so I'm gonna go a little crazy. Okay. So do the dill. This part's not there. It goes. Over. Um, and then you can also throw, so if you want to chuck a little bit of the, the greenery from okay. the fennel as well. Yours is much prettier than mine, but whatever. You know, <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Yeah. Okay. Hey, whatever it tastes like, that's what we really care about. That's very true. More dough? No. Maybe a little more dough? Okay. All right, what do we think? You can't go too hard with dill. That's my personal opinion. I'm with you. <laughs> okay, so these are beautiful. I hope everyone thinks so. Um, and then I'm just basically gonna take one of my lemon. And I'm just gonna squeeze lemon juice. Let's see. Go a little seed pops out. It's okay. Okay. Just grab a little guy. Come on. Right. Right. A lot of dill. We're just going all the dill. Do it, do it. My sister makes a chicken salad with dill. That's just like one of my mom's favorite things in the world to eat. That sounds good. Right? Okay. There's that, there's that. Yeah. All right, and then we're just gonna take a little bit of salt. Right over the top of everything. Oh my goodness. All right, so I've got my oven preset to about 375 degrees. Okay. And I'm literally just going to take this. I'm going to put this right back on that sheet tray that we had in the oven, or that we had soaking. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to pop this in the oven. Okay. All right. Good luck in there, guys. Okay. So we just put it on in there. She put him on a cookie sheet. Put it on a cookie sheet is what I meant to say. Okay. All right. 
have any good questions, just let me know. My sous chef is telling you that I'm doing things wrong. Telling you that you're doing things wrong? Oh, oh. Uh, she's trying to perfect again. All right, so I'm going to wipe this cutting board clean. Throw dill all over my kitchen. That's okay. That's not my idea. little guy has shown up. I don't know if you can see, but that's Boston. Oh, no, I'd like to see. Hey, you say hi, everybody? Hey, buddy. Yeah. Oh, so cute. Isn't he awesome? He's, he'll be, he's almost eight years old. He's adorable. He's my grumpy old man. I love him to pieces. Okay, so the brown rice is still going, right? We got our dressing. Put it in the oven. All right, so um, this is radicchio. For those of you that have never seen it before, this is radicchio. So radicchio is really high in copper, fiber, and what is it, vitamin K? It's good for bone health, for those of you that don't know. So if there's any outside leaves that don't look amazing or have brown spots or anything, I usually go ahead and discard those. Uh, you don't want to eat the... Um, stem. Oh. All that. My mic took a little bit longer than yours. Our oven was not on. We thought it was. I, I, know. I can blame my mom for it too, but I, I can't do that. <laughs> That's okay. Everyone is forgiven. Um, okay, so I cut it in half. I cut the stock, or whatever you want to call it, that white part of it out of there. I cut that again in half, and then I'm really just going to cut it into nice thin pieces. Uh, radicchio is pretty bitter, mm -hmm. so unless you're going to cook it, I highly recommend slicing it pretty thin um, to add into the salad. So the one thing that I did not find was radicchio, so I hope you, I hope it's okay, Chef Jess, but I'm just doubled up on the red cabbage instead. Heck yeah, it's your salad. Oh, yeah. But I will say I love radicchio, and yeah. one of my favorite things in the whole city of Portland is the radicchio salad at Nostrana. Have you ever had that? Which one? It's the radicchio salad at Nostrana. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, it's like super, super thin. It's so good. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so since I'm cutting up all these vegetables, I'm going to go ahead and do it and kind of put the salad together at the same time. So like I said, I made a little bit of brown rice uh, beforehand because I knew this stuff wasn't going to be ready. So this is just going to be a big family style salad, just like we did last time. So it'll be a family of four. So I'm just going to dump that rice right in there. Right into the counter. Break it apart a little bit. You can do this with warm rice. You can do this with cold rice. It really doesn't matter. I like it when the rice is a bit warm, honestly. So there's that. All right, so then we can take our nice freshly cut radicchio and just throw that right over the top. Okay. And this is, again, part of the reason why we call this our purple rain salad. A, I'm a big fan of France. Thanks. And B, we got lots of purple stuff going on in here, so it seemed appropriate. So there's that. The name right, so then we're gonna... And one of my favorite parts, the names of the salads. <laughs> Quite oh. creative. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then we're going to go with red cabbage. Oh, all right. So I know this can be intimidating, but get yourself a nice big chef knife. Yeah. Wiggle your way through. Isn't that gorgeous? i got to figure out how to grow cabbage. There's that. Yeah, I'm really only going to use about a little less than a quarter of this one, I think. Again, you want to slice really thin. Nice, nice short, just a uh, knife on hand. And this cabbage and the radicchio, um, very good for liver function. I'm sorry, say that again. If they're very good for liver function. Yes, yes, that's 100% true. Our friends have um, told us that. <laughs> I like that. Uh, another thing that red cabbage has a great deal of is vitamin C, which is good for bone health. I'm sorry, immune health. Your immune health. Your, your immune system, which is obviously a really good thing right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> the kid, he, the, the C8 kid says, thanks, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers off. All right. 
There's an awful lot of cabbage. I'm not going to use all of that in my salad. So I'm probably going to use, yeah, a little bit. I probably got half of what I, what I cut up. Okay. I'll put the rest of it back in its leaves. We will use that for a different salad tomorrow. All the salads right now. All the salads right now. Mm. All of them. What have you been making the most, would you say? Salads? Um, what have I been making the most? Uh, we grill. In fact, we grill uh, tri-tip a lot. So there's a lot of grilled tri-tip grilled tri at my house. Uh, and we typically will do just like a cilantro, uh, lime, and tequila kind of marinade. Mm. And we'll throw it on the grill. We'll do it with all sorts of fun stuff, whether it's corn or potatoes or oh, chimichurri sauce, you name it. I love chimichurri. We actually had tri-tip from the barbecue last night. Here. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh, oh, it's one of my most favorite things to dip, like, any kind of red meat into. Yes. Okay, so Thanks. So I took my bunch of radish. I'm going to cut the little tails off. I probably don't need this many either, so. One, two, three, four is probably good. The tails off. I see, and I know, I don't think we're there yet, but I er, did this earlier, and I cut my radishes, and then I just combined them. Um, cilantro, just to save time or whatever, save space. And yeah. this one, I think you and I talked about this last time, that I would put in triple the amount of cilantro. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. It. When I make stuff at home, I put tons of cilantro in it. So this was the microplane I was telling you about the last time we did this. Yes. Oh, yes. That thing scared right. me, remember? <laughs> <laughs> Don't let these things scare you. Um, so this is like the cheapest version, and in my personal opinion, the best version. They're uh, the green. I believe it's Japanese mandolin. Um, was that right? Make not that. Yeah, uh, Japanese mandolin. Uh, they're super cheap. You can find them on Amazon. They last for a really long time. I've probably had this one for a decade, um, it, and they're really they're, they're so inexpensive. If the blade starts going dull, or if you click it with something and like pop a piece of it out, just buy another one. Um, but they're fantastic. I highly recommend them. So let's see. I'll show you what I was doing this next one. So I just cut the little tail off of my radish. Mm -hmm. and I did, you know, a pretty thin slice. And really, you just kind of want to push that radish from one end to the other. Tuck your fingers in, right? Yep. Keep them as safe as possible. Yep, I remember and go right. slow. You'll see this a lot on TV where chefs just go absolutely crazy. Yes. If you're not familiar with it, don't do that. <laughs> you can do one at a time. And really just keep going until, you know, at the rate that you feel the most comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, because they'll come out, they'll come out okay. Really, as long as you do the swipe with enough force to get the, the produce through it. Yep. Um, obviously, some vegetables are, are much easier to cut through. Um, so yeah, as long as it goes across, then you're good. You don't need to just go crazy. I can, but don't only because I've been doing this for quite a while. Yeah. And I can help you on the video. Please don't not cut my finger. I think of you, don't go crazy with that. So you just don't like, do it. <laughs> no, no. You mentioned when you're watching, like, you know, you see people on, like, cooking shows doing it so fast or whatever. I, I'm curious, do you, as a chef, who, uh, very talented, has quite the reputation, do you watch cooking shows yourself? Uh, I usually don't. I am much more into uh, the documentaries about, like, how food is made, why food is made. Um, there's a couple really good ones on Netflix right now. Um, there's one, I think it's called Homemade. Mm -hmm. It's a like a six part series. I can't recall, but they talk about like there's one about uh, pasta making that's just mind boggling, and they're only about 20 minutes long. They're really awesome. Um, there's another one about um, people in the English countryside buying farms, um, and so I, I much would prefer to watch stuff like that, like you know how to raise cattle, or I don't know what the next heritage pig is going to be, or something like that, than watch like Bobby Flay make a steak. I know how to do that. <laughs> Bobby Flay. I haven't thought about Bobby Flay for a long time for some reason. I know. That's how long it's been since I've watched <laughs> those kinds of shows. I used to try to watch Rachel Ray, but I get so mad because she wouldn't wash her hands. Um, <laughs> and I would I would just like yell at the TV like a sitcom and just be like, you idiots, <laughs> wash your hands. That's what I was thinking about. Like, it must be weird or difficult for professional chefs to watch those things because, I mean, everyone has their own way to do it, but when you're watching, you're like... That drives me crazy. How can you do that? So can I you do that? Well, yeah, in front of everybody, people are really going to learn the wrong way to do it. And that's what frustrates me. Like, 
don't know, just make it more like uh, where anybody could watch it and still manage to do it. Like if you showed up somebody how to use a mandolin and all you're showing them is how to do it this quick, crazy, fast way, you're gonna have a lot of cut fingers out there. You can do all of these things with a chef's knife. Go easy, go slow, have a sharp knife. Um, and, and just be really aware of your surroundings. And if your children are running all over the place and you're cutting things super fast, slow it down. Take your time. It's okay. It's not a race. Um, I've had that happen to me a couple of times. I think I've stabbed myself a couple of times in the hand with my son running around the corner. Um, all right. So we put our radishes in there. Isn't this gorgeous? All right. And then we've taken a can of uh, chickpeas or garbanzo beans, whatever you call them. Drain them. Rinse them. Yep. Um, and we're just going to lay the, layer those on top. I love garbanzo beans. I'll put them in almost any salad that I eat. I got that from my mom from being when I was really little. Mm -hmm. Throw those on top. And then we have absolutely gorgeous cilantro it's from my garden. Gorgeous. It's so colorful. I know, isn't it beautiful? It is. I literally picked this like, I don't know, a half an hour, 45 minutes ago. So. I'm curious, could people, let's say, I mean, I don't know too many people that don't love rice, but could you use maybe a couscous or a quinoa or something else? Yeah, or a barley or um, bulgur. Um, yeah, I mean, really any hearty grain uh, will, will work for this, absolutely. Yes, I like that. Because you said it's your salad. It's, it's your, it's your salad. salad, yeah. Well, and if you like a ton of rice, like that's really what you're, you know, if you're really just going for a, a heartier meal, something that's going to stick to your ribs a little bit more, go crazy with the rice and then just sprinkle the stuff on the top and have that with like the side of salmon. And then you've got a lot of protein, you've got a lot of just more hearty food. If you just feel like you need to be a little fuller, or maybe if it's the winter time and then there aren't as many fresh vegetables as there would be in the summer. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So I chop up all of this cilantro. Yeah, you know, I think I want more cilantro. I just, I just said, I think I do. Oh, the fridge. You can go as hard, as hard as you want with the cilantro. I want more cilantro. I want more cilantro. It, it's delicious. All right. All right. Oh, my okay. How's your arm doing, Mom? Good. Good. Mom's a champ. Oh. All right. So I threw a bunch of cilantro on there. I'm going to rinse my hand off briefly. <laughs> That's a COVID sign. <laughs> okay. More All right. So we've got the rest of those roasted hazelnuts. So yeah. we're just going to same kind of chop that we did to throw them into our dressing. We're just going to lightly chop them. And when I mean lightly chop, I really just mean take the knife and get once through every nut. Should be good. Hazelnuts are small enough that I don't really feel like you need to go much more than once through. I feel like the best thing, like, I love salads, and we do this a lot here, almonds, walnuts, whatever, just the, the added crunch that nuts give a salad I think is absolutely. Fabulous. Even fruit salads, that's one thing I don't think a lot of people, like, really think about, but if you're doing, like, a watermelon salad, throwing some roasted walnuts in with it are fantastic, mm -hmm. or pine nuts, that's kind of a, an often neglected nut. Um, nuts. Right? But yeah. fruit salad, so the fruit, you get this nice sweetness, obviously, um, and usually the textures of fruits is very soft, but then you add this nice earthy flavor and the crispiness of a, a, a nut, a nut, which I think might be a good idea. So. You just yeah. mentioned uh, nuts with fruit and like fruit salads and things like that. It just reminded me of one Thanksgiving a very long time ago, <laughs> my grandma made like a jello parfait. Oh and, no! And put in pretzels and peanuts, and we all thought she was <laughs> fine, but maybe there was something to it. <laughs> we think we all just put in our role, so she she thought we needed it. Well, was it? Remember that old um, thick met Thanksgiving, the green Jello salad? Yes. Did that have walnuts in it? And cottage cheese and Jello and walnuts. Mm. All my great? favorite things. <laughs> that sounds awful. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. I know. I, know. I apologize. Um. <laughs> Okay, so we got. Yeah. Oh, good shot. That cedar in the oven smells amazing. So I'm gonna do a quick check on my rice. We're not quite there yet, but that's okay. I'm gonna let that go um, until it's done <laughs> for me. Okay. I'll, I'll be doing the same with my salmon. Yes. So there's that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the salmon out. It looks to me like it's probably sitting at about a medium rare. Personally, uh, probably more like a medium. 
Um, that's a really good, good, good space for me. If you like a really well done salmon, I'd probably leave it in for about another eight to 10 minutes, really depending. Um, but obviously you make it how you want it. It's your salad. You can do whatever you it's want. Salad. It's your salad. You do whatever you want. <laughs> Uh, so we actually did salmon, we did, two ways before this uh, video. Um, this is how we do it at the Moda Center. We throw it on a cedar plank and we throw it in the oven so it looks just like this. The other way you can do this, uh, which if you're at home, we just don't have the capacity to do it at the Moda Center, is to throw it on the grill. Yeah, so it'll give you a little bit more. Yeah, especially it's summer. It's supposed mm -hmm. to be 80 degrees this week. I'm very excited. Um, I got hazelnuts all over me. Um, so that'll be Uh, and then we also threw some of the fennel fronds on both sides to just even more enhance that flavor. So this is the grilled version. This is the oven baked version. Either way is totally fine. Um, so what I would do is take those two, put those on the side, place those on the table, and then back to our hazelnut dressing. Put that on the grill. So Jess, I think your I think your microphone's covered. Uh oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we're back. Oh good, okay, good. The Wi-Fi in my house is being a little weird today, so. And as I'm going through this dressing, I'm noticing I still got a little bit of chunks of hazelnuts in here. Mm -hmm. That's fine by me since I threw hazelnuts on top of the salad as a garnish anyway. Yeah. But if that's if that's something you don't want, or maybe you don't want to add the crunchy hazelnuts into yours, then I would just throw it back into the blender for a little bit longer. But, all right, so we're gonna do that. Let me grab my fish spatula real fast. Okay, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna give mine a one, a one more zap, just to make sure it's all um, mixed together. So I'm gonna be loud for one sec. Go for it. That's all I needed. That's what it worked. Okay. And then, yeah, I mean, if you like a, a thicker dressing, um, like if you wanted to throw it on a sandwich or something, um, because that's how good this dressing is and make it more like a smear, then I would just cut that oil by like half and then the hazelnuts will hold it together and that turns into like a really good sandwich smear. Mmm, or bagel. Smear. Oh. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. All, all right, um, yeah, so this, so this was the one that we threw in the oven. Uh, we let it sit there for what, about 21 minutes? Um, mm -hmm. And it comes right off of the plank, super easy. Absolutely good idea to oil it first, just in case our cedar plank was really, uh, really wet when we put it in. So I felt like that was probably an okay idea. Yeah. But um, yeah, so again, salmon, people that are nervous about salmon with skin on, it still has it on. It came off perfectly nicely. If you don't want to eat it with your salad, um, then don't. It flakes right off the skin super easy. Um, so nobody has to worry about being forced to eat salmon skin if they don't want to. Mm -hmm. um, but then that's it. So really, if you're going to serve family style, I would put this on the side with a big bowl of salad. If you want to do it individually, just chuck it on top. Um, but that's where we're at. I'm loving it so much. What do you guys think? You mentioned it a little bit, but before we go, just you know, the benefits of seafood and salmon in particular. I mean, we just love it, but it is just so salmon's a yeah, salmon's a great source of uh, omega threes, um, which are good for brain. They're good for memory. They're good for our just basic brain function all around. Um, and then obviously it's the good fat, so it helps you uh, process cholesterol and all that kind of good stuff. So. Highly recommend seafood with everything, really. At least once a day. I agree too. It smells. All right, well, let's take a look at this and see what it looks like. I feel bad saying how good it smells, but I, you're, you can't appreciate it because you go ahead. Really? Too, but oh I, if you made this along with us, uh, let me know how yours is turning out. And like we mentioned, if you want to go back and watch this uh, story on Trailer Focus just IG, you can make it later. And yeah. all the ingredients are on our website on um, IG and actually Twitter as well, I believe. So hit that up. Um, make this it's a delightful and and it's it's just it's just really pretty to look at <laughs> yeah it's a great and I think for all these as we're getting into warmer 80 degree 90 degree summer nights it's easy really put the salmon on the grill you don't even have to turn the stove on except to make some brown rice um and everything's nice light fresh and it won't fill up your stomach too much which is good or like leave you too heavy I guess is what I'm saying it's perfect. I love it so much. And my mom, who's been working so hard, you know, sous chef and camp person, she doesn't have to make dinner tonight. This is yes. Perfect. Yay. This is, uh, yeah, this, is for, this is my gift to you for all of your help. <laughs> Thank you. And as, Thanks, soon as, mom. as soon as my salmon is done, I will put it on top. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Well, send me a picture of your final product, Brooke. I want to see what it looks like. 
same. And everyone else out there, if you made it, please send us pictures too. Yeah. Too. I'd love to see them. And so would Chef Jess. And yes. thank you so much for doing this. It's always so fun to see your face and get to make some healthy choices for people now that they're, of course, at home much more and cooking more for themselves and their families. So thank you so much. And I look forward to our next chat on Cook with Brooke. What, do you know what we're going to be making? Have you thought about it? Uh, I think we're going to do, so there's three main salads at Plum Tasty um, in the Moda Center. And so I think we're going to do the third one. And honestly, I can't tell you what it's called off the top of my head right now. But that's good. We'll leave it a mystery until uh, <laughs> two weeks from now, I think, because we're going to do this again. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chef Jess. Thank you, of course, to our friends at Moda Health. Fred Meyer in there. They gave us all these amazing ingredients. And everyone watching, I appreciate it. See if there's any last quick questions. You know, they're back to fighting about basketball again. <laughs> Right, well, and we're all keeping our fingers crossed. We're really just keeping ourselves entertained until we can play again. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chef Jess, and I will see you in a week and a half or so when we get to do Cook with Brooks episode okay. three. And we'll see if the, our friends that I'll put this all together want me to cook with you again or if they think it might be a dangerous situation. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, let me know either way. I miss you. Miss you too. I'll okay, talk bye, you. guys. Thanks for watching, guys. Check it out on Trailblazers IG. I'm going to save it right now. Mom, I'm going to steal this back from you. You did a great job. There she is. Isn't she cute? All right. All right. Here we go. Thanks for watching. Bye, Chef Jess. Bye, Brad. I have to end it, but I want to.